Hey there ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, going to put together a video here on how to figure out the protons, neutrons, and electrons in an atom, which was actually your homework last night. And then also going to talk about the back side of the homework, which was the ion side. So the first part of any of this is actually just becoming familiar with your periodic table. Hopefully you have your periodic table out. I will pause while you get it out. There we go, good job. Um, and when you look at your periodic table, you see this kind of key here. Mine's a little bit blown up, so I can talk about it. Um, every single periodic table has the symbol of the element. Um, sometimes they have the name, sometimes they don't, but we had you learn a bunch of the symbols and names. Uh, and it also always has the atomic number. Those, those two things, these two things, are pretty much on every periodic table. The third thing that's usually on there is the atomic mass. And the atomic mass is not quite as useful yet. It'll be more useful later because it's actually an average. If you have four silicon atoms, the four silicon atoms might have different masses, but we could average the masses together, and that's what we see on the periodic table is the average of all of those types of silicon. Um, and we're going to do a quick example before we hit the actual worksheet here. Uh, I have written up here in this corner, I've written that silicon 29 or 29 silicon. And the 29 is the mass of this type of silicon. And you can tell it doesn't actually match with that weird mass because that weird mass is an average of a whole bunch of silicons. So uh, silicon 29 has a mass of 29. So the easiest thing we can pull out of this is its mass number is 29. So it has a mass of 29. What the heck is a mass number? A mass number is actually just the protons and the neutrons added together. It's the protons and the neutrons added together. Well, the other thing I can find in the periodic table is where it says silicon is 14, that 14 is its number of protons. Okay, so if its protons are 14 and its mass number is 29, can I figure out its neutrons? Yeah, I certainly can. Um, its neutrons would be 15, because the last time I checked, 14 plus 15 equaled the mass of 29. Yeah, that's the worst looking 9 ever written, 29. Um, and then the fourth piece of information uh, really depends on whether or not we're talking about an atom or an ion. So atoms are neutral. Ions are charged. So with atoms, the protons and the electrons are equal. With ions, they are not equal ever. Um, and so if someone tells you it's an atom, you know immediately that the electrons and the protons are the same value. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the atom side of the worksheet. Um, it starts off, you find the element on your periodic table, and then we're going to just censor some viewing here. There we go. Um, you find the element on the periodic table and start filling some things in you don't have to do any work on. Like the symbol is iron, the symbol for iron is Fe, the symbol for sulfur is S. That's pretty easy. Um, then I find the atomic number, 26 and 26. And then I can move on to the protons. Since the protons and the atomic number are the same, that's an easy fill-in. And these are atoms. So the number of electrons should also be pretty simple, because like we just said, if they are atoms, they're neutral, and the protons equal the electrons. So this and this are going to match any time it's an atom. Again, though, with the ion, they won't match. You have to pay attention. That's going to be the key, is paying attention to whether it's an atom or an ion. And the whole front of this sheet was all atoms. That's not too terrible. Um, and the last thing is that the mass number, protons and neutrons added together. So this mass number 
equals the protons plus the neutrons. And if you check my simple math there, 26 plus 30 equals 56. That's pretty much what we're doing the whole page. And the only thing that's missing from that, it's in your notes, but uh, we didn't talk about it, is the last column, this group number or name. And if you go to the periodic table, you can see the group numbers right across the top. So it's pretty easy to grab the group numbers. So for iron and for sulfur, iron and for sulfur, iron is in group 8, sulfur is in group 16. All right. So let's go back here and iron was in group 8 and sulfur is in group 16. Um, you might notice that I wrote other names on there. I wrote the transition metal and oxygen family because every element in this zone here is called a transition metal. This is called the boron family. This is called the carbon family, the nitrogen family, and the oxygen family. Those four have very easy names. Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Everyone underneath them is in their family. Um, now, the family here and the family here do have special names. The 17th family is called the halogens, H-A-L-O-G-E-N-S. Sorry, I'm writing on the screen. It's not the best. screen that time. And the last group is called the noble gases. Alright, so that's everyone underneath helium is a noble gas. Fluorine and everyone underneath it is a halogen. I skipped two groups. Uh, this group here on down, that is called the A-L-K-A-L-I, alkali. And group two is the alkaline earth. Um, and both of them, we usually say metals after that. I usually pause on writing metals because I like to point out that group one is one word and group two is two words. Okay, so we have the alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, transition metals, boron family, carbon family, nitrogen family, oxygen family, halogens, and the nobility, the noble gases. The voice is struggling. Every day I'm struggling. Sorry, I'm singing a card. Um, okay, so we're just going to kind of move some pieces down here and look at some of the work that's already been done. Um, I'm filling things out. Uh, the copper one was a little tricky. I had to use the periodic table's atomic number to figure that one out and then kind of work my way through. So what I want you to do is try some of the ones that are hiding behind this red box. If you've already, and, and pause the video and try them if you haven't. If you have, then just check your answers. And I'm rolling down. You can check your answers. Oops. Mercury. So for some reason, the M is missing. Now, Mercury. Okay. Um, and while you guys are checking, what is that doing there? That 9, I think, should be up here. No. Hmm. Not sure. What should that be? That should be uh, 6. Whoa. Glad I'm not recording this. That should be a six. Right. Not sure where that nine's supposed to be. Oh, I found it. I found it. Nine should be there. Because uranium is 92 atomic number, 92 protons, 92 electrons. Okay, good. Now I'm going on to the next page. Uh, on the back of that sheet, you had ions, and remember, ions are different than atoms. They've either gained or lost electrons. So if you see an oxygen atom, an oxygen atom has eight protons and eight electrons. But the oxygen ion, or oxide ion, 
has two extra electrons than usual. So 8 and 10, two extra electrons. And the charge is written on the top left, and I just added ones to the hydrogen and lithium there. Um, if you have a positive charge, that should mean that it's losing an electron. So this hydrogen's a plus one. It has one proton, but if it's a positive charge, it has no electrons. Lithium has three protons, positive one charge. It only has two electrons. And some people like to kind of write a little charge in there to help them out. All right, I'm not going to reveal what's behind this red box here. You guys can fill that in on your own. And then I have this fluorine one also. So this is a fluorine with a minus one charge. That one is a little big. Sorry about that. Um, and so I filled in the easy stuff. Fluorine, atomic number nine. Protons are nine. Neutrons plus protons give me my mass number. Now how am I going to figure out the electrons here? Well, if it has nine protons, what are the number of electrons? I'm going to write a P for protons. Nine protons. How many negatives would it need to be a total of negative one? Think about that. Nine positives and ten negatives. That would be negative one. So this has got to be ten electrons. All of these questions are going to have really simple little positive, negative math problems in them. Just got to pay attention to the different signs. And I think that's about it. And so after you finish the ion side, um, I would like you to go on to the next page. It has like a crossword puzzle and some other questions about protons, neutrons, and electrons. All right, have a good weekend. I'll see you next week.